Hey, GED students, Christopher sent us a couple of word problems here on Facebook Messenger. So that's um, www.facebook.com slash light and salt learning. You can send me questions as well. Uh, but he sent me these two word problems, and I thought that they would make great examples for the very first skill you need to be able to do with word problems, which is choosing the correct operation. So when I say operation, I'm talking about those basic actions that we perform in mathematics. Now, there's lots of operations, but the four most basic ones and the first four we learn, um, of course, are addition. Uh, let me bust out my pen here. Addition, it's inverse subtraction. Inverse just means opposite. Multiplication, which is like repeated addition and division, which is similar to repeated subtraction. All right, so those are our first four basic operations, and that's what we're going to be focusing on here today. So let's go ahead and read the first one. It says, the Murakamis have $2,350 in their checking account and $12,315 in their savings account. How much more do they have in savings than they do in checking? Okay, so first thing I want to do with the word problem is really focus in on what are they asking me to do or to find. So let's go back and read that question. How much more do they have in savings than they do in checkings? Here is the thing they're asking us to find, how much more. And they're really asking us to compare the size of these two things. Uh, but there's two different ways to compare. They can ask you how much more, or they could ask you how many times as much. So let's just really quickly look at kind of a bar graph of these two numbers to show you what they mean by how much more. And you don't have to do this on your test, okay? I just want you to have a visual example of what I'm doing. So if you look at their checking account, uh, they've got about 2000 there. So like the bar would go like $2,350. Okay, and that's the checking account. But if you look at the savings account, they have a lot more, right? Way up here, it's like $12,000. And this phrase, how much more, is an interesting phrase. Because when you say how much more, you're actually comparing the two, you're comparing the size difference here. So when I look at how much more, I'm looking at this piece I don't have. Like if they were equal, how much more would it take to make the checkings equal to the savings? I'm looking for this piece. A lot of students see the word more. They've memorized, um, you know, these keywords. They say, oh, look, more, I should add. But no, even I'm not saying give me so, so much more. I'm saying how much more do I have? I want to find the difference between the two numbers. If you've spent any time with me watching my videos, you understand that difference is subtraction. To find that size of the piece that I don't have, I'm actually going to have to take the bigger number. So in this case, that's my savings, 12,315, and subtract out the smaller number, 2,350, to find the space between them, how much more one number is than the other. And of course, when you're on the GED, you would have a calculator to do these simple calculations uh, whenever you have a word problem. If you're taking one of the other high school equivalency tests like the task or the high set, you might not get a calculator, so you might want to practice this calculation by hand. But I get $9,965 more. That's the amount of this space. Wonderful. All right, let's look at another example he sent. Now this one's the same basic idea, but we're stepping it up a notch. So let's take a look. It says the flight from Cleveland to Raleigh is 569 miles. However, if you fly from Boston to San Francisco, the trip is 147 miles less than five times the distance of the other flight. Whew. Okay, a little more complicated. Find the distance between Boston and San Francisco. So once again, let's go straight to what we've been asked to do or to find. They asked us to find the distance between Boston. Oh, you know what? <laughs> It's not that I'm doing it wrong. It's just that I have a weak grasp of geography. Let's do Boston on this side <laughs> and San Francisco over there since San Francisco is on the West Coast. 
and Boston's on the East Coast. Okay, so we're looking for the distance of a flight between them. And let's see what we know. It says the flight from Cleveland to Raleigh. Cleveland is Ohio. Raleigh is North Carolina. Y'all can just see that I really struggle with geography. Uh, 569 miles. I have an excuse, guys. I grew up in Hawaii. So I'm way better at naming the Hawaiian islands than I am at a, than <laughs> cities on the mainland. <laughs> All right. And then what else do I know? Okay. If I fly from Boston to San Francisco. Okay. I know something about the Boston to San Francisco trip. I know that it's 147 miles less than five times the distance of the other flight. Okay, so I know the distance of the other flight is 569 miles, but the two flights aren't equal. What I see is that from San Francisco to Boston, you know, it's five times as long, but not exactly five times as long. It's 147 miles less than that. Okay, so super important here. Um, less than actually means to subtract this number. So like 147 miles less than means I'm going to take 147 miles away from something. So away from what? Well, the thing that comes next. It says less than five times the distance of the other flight. Well, that's nice because they say times. I know exactly what they mean when they say times. Five times means multiply the distance of the other flight. And that's not an unknown. I know how long the other flight is. The other flight is 569 miles. So five times that distance, but it's not exactly that. It's 147 less than that. So then after I do that math, I'm going to take away 147 and I'll write it correctly, 147 miles from that. Okay, so let's do that. So five times the distance of the other flight, and we do the multiplication here first, is going to be 2,845 miles, but I don't have exactly five times. I have 147 less than that five times. So now I'm gonna subtract the 147 out. So minus 147, and I get that the distance between the two cities is 2,698 miles. And again, I was using my calculator because I know whenever I'm on the GED, I get a calculator with my word problems. Again, if you're taking the task or the high set, you might wanna practice your work by hand. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments. If you wanna practice this skill, and I highly recommend you do, go hit up the word problem unit of the crash course, and the very first lesson is called choosing the correct operations. And like I said, if you don't have this skill mastered, you're gonna struggle on any high school equivalency test, okay? Interpreting word problems is a huge part of the GED, of the task of the high set. And then finally, I just want to thank everybody who supports my work on Patreon, my patrons uh, who do monthly donations, and then of course on Cup of Coffee, those who buy me cups of coffee. You guys are really funding the work that I do and you make this possible. So appreciate you. Happy learning.